Welcome back to One Non Blonde. I'm your host, Kim, and today I've got Andre Cohen again. Um, welcome, our weekly date. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing good, and how about you? I am doing wonderful. I was just saying that I was like the back of my mind. I hear you. I have these conversations. In fact, I quote you a lot, which is a great thing. <laughs> but I was, I was at the grocery store today, and I was like going through the grocery store, and I started to think about what I needed and what I wanted. And then, you know, I was, cause I was at Target. Okay. So when you go to Target, what happens in Target? You, you don't realize that you spend your whole paycheck plus other people's paycheck. Right. <laughs> so, but I was walking through there. I really my, had a mindset. It was like, it was like an epiphany. And I really want to thank you because it was, it's like, I started putting things in my cart and I'm like, no, I really don't need this. It's not something that I may, I may use it. Like, Okay, I was going to buy Chipotle pepper spice. I never even tried it before. If I was going to try it, then I said, well, maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Then I'm like, nope, putting it back. I mean, I've, in the back of my mind, wait, well, it was only $2.69, but like if we do that all the time, it's only $2. It's only $3. It's only $5. It's only this much stuff. And then when you have all this clutter and you don't know what to do with it, it's not fun. It's, you have to put it someplace. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> And that's, that's a, a, a good start here. I, I really like that because I, I was um, getting a few messages and uh, the funniest message was, is, can you make me do it? <laughs> and I said, no, but I can help you that you can do it. I cannot help people and force them and says, you have to get help. People have to realize if they don't want it, they will not succeed. We, I'm going to talk to them for 10 years and nothing will. If you really don't want that, if you don't want that improvement for yourself, there's nothing I can do. My name is Andre Cohen and I am not David Copperfield. <laughs> We've said that before, but I think people think it's like, oh, magic. No. Yeah. <laughs> they think, they really think. They make one call with me for one hour and the whole world changes. And I always give them the same metaphor. How long does it take to break an arm or a leg? A few seconds. How long does it take to heal? A couple of weeks. Six weeks, eight weeks. It depends, yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you carry an issue around with you 30, 40, 50 years, I cannot go. You healed, you know? is not realistic that is really not realistic and that comes also like you said what you need what you want we have to determine what we need and what we need is really to realize it's always left foot right foot left foot right foot if you try to move both feet at the same time you fall on your butt you will not move solid and when I talk about the word need and wants, we mix them up like there is no tomorrow. I agree. I agree. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I was not in a grocery store. I was at a department store. And I heard a guy talking to his wife. I need a new white shirt. <laughs> I need a new white shirt. So his wife, she probably wanted her own white shirt, said, do you really need it? You got seven. Yes, but I already got him for a year. Now, listen to that. But I already got him for a year. Mm -hmm. Seven white shirts. Not talking maybe about all the other shirts he had. I'm wearing one today too, but I didn't buy it. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. we know. It was, but, it was, this is your story, right? <laughs> yeah, but I was thinking. One year, seven shirts already. That's why I need a new white shirt. <coughs> so don't you wash them right? Don't you iron them right? Mm -hmm. uh, you just throw them in a closet and don't want to iron them. Oh, what the hell is wrong with you having for one year, seven white shirts and you need a new one? You wanted a new one. And that's the perfect example of mixing up 
the wants and the needs. Seven days a week, right? Every day one shirt. So he says he has seven white shirts. Like I said before, we don't know how many others he had. I didn't ask him. I just was observing it. Yes. Uh, when I started <coughs> as I am, I was a minimalist before. And I was really calculating, what do I need? What do I need for my job? Do I need for my work wear a tie every day? No. Do I need to wear a dress shirt every day? No. Do I need this or that or that? So like right now we're doing, we're doing Zoom. I can wear swim shorts, you wouldn't know it. Of I don't, course. you know. So look really of your needs. What it ends up to, Kim, is we have a house, 1,400 square feet, one closet, six foot, right? Mm -hmm. So I put in four white shirts, four light blue shirts, and so on and so on. So it's full. Beautiful. Everything is laid out beautiful. So if there's a woman in the house, she has her stuff too. If you go not really by the needs, if you go what you want, Mm -hmm. And we had it in one of our prior sessions. We buy a lot to substitute our happiness to what people call, I have to reward myself. And Wait. now I say, yeah. they punish themselves. And I tell you why they punish themselves. So, six foot closet of the woman of the house and the main house is full if you, if you do it in a half a decent way. Mm -hmm. Now you cramp your stuff together. Next thing is, we need a bigger closet. All right? So you build a bigger closet that costs money. You have to hustle to make a bigger closet, to fill it up again and again and again. Before you look, you have a 12-foot closet or walk-in closet or whatever, or make a room a closet. It's full of substitute and rewards, which is punishment. Because all of a sudden your house becomes too small. You need to buy a house. You go and go and go and go for something you really don't need. Yeah. Retail and, therapy, we think they call it, right? <laughs> yeah, no, shopaholics. Yeah. And I go, If you balance within yourself and you're so, so important. Uh, when I buy a shirt, I want to love it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's simple, I want to love it. But what is there to love about a shirt? The quality, how it fits, how it washes, how it irons. If everything is beautiful, Every time you wear it, you feel good about it yeah, because people understand numbers. I buy four shirts, 50 bucks or 40 bucks each. It's $200. I buy two shirts for $80 with great, great quality, the wash nice and stuff. Where do I reward myself really? With four shirts or with two shirts? No, I agree. Because I think sometimes, like, I know for myself, I guess when I was, my kids were younger, you kind of go with quantity over quality. And I, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that, like you said, it's better to really like something, really love something, really, it makes you feel good. You feel good yes. when you're wearing it. You like how it feels on your, on your skin or whatever. It's more important to, to, to buy that than to buy a $10 shirt or like you said a $20 shirt and then it's like it falls apart or it just doesn't it does it stretches and you're just miserable and it's so you end up going and buying another one so you just spent 40 and you could have spent 60 on something you really wanted right yeah and it is also as we progress the last 20 years with fashion and casualty there's only a few jobs where you really need to wear a suit mm-hmm if you even go in the high-ranking decision-makers, 
Branson, uh, Steve Jobs, for example, always jeans and, and a, a long sleeve t shirt and tennis shoes. Mm -hmm. You can live your individualism. You don't need an overload on things. You know, I, uh, Steve Jobs was a minimalist. That's why he was successful. He could focus on the things he really loved to do. And that was Apple and his family. Mm -hmm. He left early because of his illness, but he was actually a very balanced man. And when you watched when he gave briefings or statements or whatever, it was very focused because he was not distracted by hustling for the wants. And, and, and many very, very successful people, they are almost minimalists. They might have a little bit of a bigger house, but when you walk in there, there's not an overload. I walked in, I cannot say the name, but to, to a person I was working with uh, for a year, I mean, this person had more money than you and I probably can spend if he threw it out with both hands. And when I walked into this house, I was so pleasantly surprised. It was beautifully furnished, but to the needs. You saw antique, but not an overload. There was one piece of antique in the living room, not even big, beautifully. There was artwork, but not the walls plastered from it. Say, wow, not showing off, just enjoying quality. I know that picture he bought, it was from Koch, which is a aquarelle painter from Europe. And I know one of this uh, uh, four by five foot paintings run around, I would say 40,000 right now. Mm -hmm. He had it. Beautiful painting, original, no print, nothing. So he enjoyed the good things, but in moderate quality, quantity, but mm -hmm. high quality. And when I, when I started working with him, I saw why he did that. And as I worked with him, he was different before. There was overload. He showed me pictures from his other house and, and, and things. And he says, you know, I found out it distracts me. I had so much artwork in my old house I didn't know, I didn't even look anymore because it was so many pictures hanging on the wall. I didn't enjoy them anymore. And here I want to tell you, when people always say simple is you live in a, in a cabin with holes in the roof. No, it's not true. If you're a simplest, you can live in a high-rise penthouse. You can live in a house, you can live in a bungalow, you can live in a, you can live wherever you want. Being a simple minimalist starts in your mind. In your mind of determine the exact meaning of the word need and want. Now, do I say we shouldn't want? No, of course we should want. But after the need is fulfilled, and I go here by a very sad examples nowadays. And you see it uh, uh, probably too. I need a new car. The old is only three, four years old. I need a new car. Okay. Word need. So they get the new car. The monthly payment is $350, $400 for that car. And I heard it with my own ears. How are we going to buy food today? But the new car was there. It was needed. Mm -hmm. Did he really go by the needs? The family needs food on the table. You need four wheels that runs reliable. You don't need a new car. I'm driving around in a 2007. My kids tease me. I'm like, it runs. <laughs> it may not be as pretty as the newer stuff. But you know what? I can get from one place to there and thank God it's safe. It's a Toyota. I just had it checked and the guy says, I have like 150,000 miles on it. He's like, you can get 150,000. I'm like, yes, I like to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, 
I know people, they have a car, it's eight, nine years old, still mm -hmm. look brand new, got 120, 140,000 miles on it. And then there's the other one. One of the needs is if you have something, take care of it. That's what I'm doing with my car. <laughs> to baby it. <laughs> take care of it. Take care of your house. Take care of your car. And take care before of everything. Before of your house and your car, take care of the people around you. And taking care is not the financial it is also, and we really underestimated emotional taking care. It is a difference. And I can see it when people call each other, especially when I'm working with a client and the husband or the wife picks up the cell phone. Oh, hold on, my husband, my wife, or my son is calling me. Yes, what do you want? That is not taking care, it is responding. Okay. So, we stress ourselves out for once we don't really need. Do we need people to respect us? Yes. Do we need people to care about us? Yes. Do we need people to love us? Yes. So I always say success in life has something in common. They're like a flower. I have to plant it, I have to water it to enjoy it. Same with success. If you don't set the plant, if you don't water it, you're never gonna see a nice flower. In life, if you don't plant your life and water it every day, how are you gonna enjoy it? That's why we have downfall, hangnails, uh, hard acts and everything. And there's a very, I don't know if I ever said it, man, we, we talked too much, but I researched the time when divorce became very common was in the years when paper plates and plastic cups become fashion. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit. I remember we, we, we briefly mentioned that and I, yeah, because it's all throwaway. It's all convenience. Yeah. It's this nobody cares. On. Yeah. disposable and again need i'm gonna pound it into people like crazy you really need what you need and take care of what you need so i'm gonna make it brutally simple what do i need i need to breathe otherwise i can live i need to sleep otherwise i can't be awake i need to eat i need to drink to afford of all of that, I need to work. That is the basics. But that's one person. So there's another person. What do I need? I need to feel excitement about the other person. I need to have those butterflies about another person. Okay. How I'm going to enjoy the butterflies when I give him room to fly around and not tie it in, in want, 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 want. Okay, overcoming, I almost said it's, it's an anxiety of, I want it right now. Hmm. Right now? What is right now? What really is right now? Well, right in this moment, it is really most of the time not possible. Because things have to develop. Things have to grow to be stable. There is, um, my best example is, there is mass greenhouses where they uh, grow vegetables and everything. <clears throat> and they yeah. grow really fast with artificial light and stuff. If you buy that, you have your vegetable in your refrigerator for tomatoes one or two, maximum three days and they get flabby. Mm -hmm. Cucumbers or whatever it is. It is fast done. One, it goes down. If you get some really in organic greenhouses or even outdoors, I have tomatoes in there for a week and they're still firm and then taste well. So certain things to be solid need a certain development. And that is the same with our emotions. It needs a, I want it right now. 
okay? We get impatient. And I can understand that. I can understand it. And I'll tell you why. Our technology is so fast, developed so fast, that we got in a modus of right now in our mind, which is unhealthy. We're unhealthy. Now, a lot of the young people listening, they probably laugh now, but I said, when we think back, <clears throat> there was no cell phone. When there was, yeah, barely computer, but not even email established, fax and whatever it was. What did people do? They called each other on the landline. They called sometimes two days each other playing phone tag before mm -hmm. they could talk. Now I read online and I crack up. A man is not in love with you if he doesn't, in a, in a matter of 30 seconds, answers your text. A man is not loving when he doesn't call you back in five minutes after you called him. Why? He might be at work. He might, yeah, he might even have his phone with him. He might be in the bathroom. <laughs> let's okay. be honest, let's be but, real. <laughs> and that goes back to this right now. And, and they implement the speed already as an emotional pressure. And this emotional pressure is a killer. And I tell you why. I can fall in love with you. And everything is fine. And we say, okay, we resume maybe twice or three times a week for five minutes because you have work, I have work, and everything is fine. No problem. Once every three months we do this, and once every two months we do that. We give it the time. Now, we're deeply in love. And you say, why didn't you answer my text? And I look, it was sent two minutes ago. I feel pressured. I feel pressured that I cannot do it from my heart, that I have to do it on a timing. So if you give me the timing, how fast I can respond, or I give you the timing, how fast you can respond. We go already in a very unpleasant relationship where one controls the other. We start controlling by telling each other the time you got exactly 10 seconds to respond. You see what I mean, what it kills? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think that's why time goes so fast. We rush ourselves through the time. We don't give ourselves time. And that's why the simplest is a very, very good thing and the minimalist too, I learned from the minim minimalist so tremendous much. That's how I can develop the simple minimalist mm -hmm. because the simple minimalist was teaching me great, great things, great things. And the biggest thing is really less is more. And also breathe and also do what you like to do. Many, many, many. And now it's a fun part. Believe it or not, over 9 million Americans live as minimalists. And they are not people, they are forced to live that. They choose. <laughs> they choose to live it and they enjoy it. And they can be intellectual again. By intellectual, I mean, they have the time to have a conversation. One of my clients is a minimalist and changing to a simplimalist now. And further on uh, in another podcast, I will go into details. What's the difference? It's not much difference, but it's significant for our mind. But he makes 180K a year as a minimalist. How can he do that? He made half before. He wanted to work from home. And he found a way to do what he did before. He enhanced it for himself and worked from home. He was a graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So he taught himself to do websites, to do this and that and that. 
So he does a whole bunch of things from home. Now he is, he is not only working for himself, he is so good that he works for a company at home. So he gets a paycheck plus the money he makes. That's why he makes so much money. But in his own pace, he takes the freedom because he has the freedom and the room to be so good. He takes the freedom and somebody says, well, you know, I have a website for you to make. I need it in three days. And he says, okay, what is it? And he says, sorry, I'm the wrong person. Why, 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 why? I need four days because I want to do it the right way. I want to mm -hmm. do it good for you. <clears throat> if I don't have four days, I don't do it for you. And they give him four days. So he takes the pressure out of his job and brings more quality in his product for his client. So it's a win-win situation. He makes it simple. He says, okay, I calculate myself so many hours a day, then I need two hours to do grocery shopping, gas my car, wash my car. Then I want to spend an hour walking with my wife. Okay. And he has the balance. And that's how he became successful. And that's why I said we need to plant that, water it. Because he was saying, okay, what do I need? And when I say, if you focus on your need, your wants will come. That is one of the proofs. He focused. I need so much money to be happy. So I work from home. He created with his needs the room for the want to make more money. He was not hassling for it. It came. You know, I was thinking, you know, you're talking to me. And I, I, I'm remembering the conversation we had about, you know, you, when someone says, oh, I didn't have time to do this, or I didn't have time to do that. And I'm, I'm guilty of this. So this, this is, this is my onus. I'm, I'm, Are I'm, you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm more aware and I, I see what I need to do. Like if I don't need lunch, you know, I'll say to myself, okay, why I hear, like I said, I hear you with your little, with your little German accent. Why didn't you make the lunch? Why didn't you, make, why didn't you have your lunch? Why, why do you, why did you say you don't have time to do this? And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, it is so simple. And at the same time, I'm like, I'm getting better. And I have to tell you guys, not on the show, but Andre coaches me all the time. With, I'll get these little, I'll get these little messages. Okay, Kim, or really, you, you got to talk, you know, um, but I'm getting better, I think, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, when I become this star pupil, oh my gosh, just people would say, you know, <laughs> it's going you know, to be world renowned, what can I say? You're, you're, you're trying hard, but you're the perfect example to mixing up the needs and the wants. I do. I do. Because you have to look what you need to do, but you want to do everything. I want to help everybody. And I got to stop doing that. You can't. You can't get it out of your head. I know. You're not God. I know. I'm not God. I wish I could help more people every day, but I only have so much time in my day. Okay, and if I do it wrong, I don't help anybody. So if you, if you start helping some people, you really don't help them sometimes. Your intentions are to help, but you start here, then somebody, you try to own every person who needs help. And here, it's one important thing, not only you, we are, and I made that happen. Um, I set boundaries. Okay. I set boundaries. When somebody says, well, you know, can we talk a half an hour longer? Well, if it's my last client of the day and I don't have a client afterwards, we can do that. Mm -hmm. But I have my iron rule. One hour break between clients. Not for me. 
to get every my thoughts together, what I had with this client, get my mind clear to focus on a new client and understand where he is coming from or she is coming from to fit for that hour in their shoes and can feel what they really need. Okay, so this hour is not because, hey, I'm going to the pool having some lollipops. <laughs> okay? It is just, if you take it serious, it is really trying to put the shoes of the other person. And sometimes you don't fit at all, but then you have to be honest too and tell that person, hey, you know, you need to be on medication, not talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think no, I'm there yet. You have to be honest. You have to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's why it's, for me, it's so important that the people out there sit back and says, okay, need and want. They're so differently spelled already. Let me feel the difference. Let me feel the difference. And if you feel and see the difference in needs and wants, something magical happened to you. You give yourself a break already. It's I, magical. I it don't. Magical. I, I know. I, 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 that's, I need to do, I, I need to do that. I need to give myself a break and I don't. And, you know, Andre, it's, I, it's not too bad, but I, I, I was trying to help move furniture, which even my job. Yeah. And I got a nice, like, I, I thought I was going to have a major shiner. Thank God it didn't happen, but I still have a cut in my eye. And I, I sent a picture to Andre. And the first thing he says, we need to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the major point is I told you you need to talk is so you don't tell people I hit you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my no. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, you know, the, the thing is, when you text me back or when you text me and says, how are you doing today? I know exactly how you text, how you feel. We develop pattern, how we use words, where we can feel the other person's tension or not tension or intention. So, you know, what I try, to, when I say magical, when you create that room between wants and needs, it is really magic. It happened to me. You know, I do something else too. I work a little bit in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always thought, I have this and this and this and that. And I was wondering, why, why do I have to correct this and correct this? And so I said, hey, what do I need? I need to finish it. So if you do creative work, sometimes you just don't have a creative day. But you, yeah. have, to fin you have to finish it. Mm -hmm. So I took a breeze, picked up the phone or the email, or whatever, and says, listen, I need two more days to complete it. So it really makes sense. So it's really good. And uh, some people understood it, some don't. But what happened, took about three years. Even the people that didn't understood saw it. I say, I send it to you right now. But just leave it in your computer. Wait until I'm finished. And they saw the difference. Some of them understood it right away. Some of them took three years. Because again, the needs and the wants. Mm -hmm. So we need a project. We need a great project. Because we're not the only one out there. So if we produce a TV show, a reality show, a film or whatever... We always need to put up here because others are creative too. Others are good too. There's a lot of talent out there. So we have to think with the utmost intensity and intensive what would be the best case others do so we can do better. That's already pressure. Yes. So why add additional pressure on and make it not so good? And that's why I said it is 
we need a good project. We we'll want to be the leader resource project. Okay. But if they fulfill the need, then the ones have the room. And that's why I say when we really discover the magic between the needs and breathe after we need, the ones come in. It is a magical space in between. Magical. If we really put our mindset in the right direction. Here I talk about the mind. Oh, my mind works good. <laughs> well, a lot of people have great mind, but they don't train it because in a daily mill, in a daily mill where they really have to provide, especially after that year. And that is where we have to start to make things simpler for us because we make it simpler for others too. And one of the points here is proper communication. If I am late, I will tell you not when I'm late, I will tell you before I'm late. You tell me before you're late. Mm -hmm. so, there is no pressure. There is no frustration. There is expect, we humans are funny creatures. We have expectations. When you tell me, Andre, one o'clock, my expectations is quarter before or quarter after. Mm -hmm. Let's have an academic hour. We have to play in in our life right now because our lives are not always by the second. Yes. Used to be different in older days mm -hmm. because we were not so distracted. So my expectation is 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. So if we don't communicate and I tell you, listen, I can do it only earlier or I will be a half an hour late ahead of time. Yeah. We create disappointments. Even we don't want to. So communication. Again, need. I don't want to communicate. I need to communicate. Do I make sense today? Oh, it makes perfect sense. And you know what? I was thinking, and I think this would be great for the next time. You know, when we feel like we're letting people down and, you know, and we, we, we make our own narrative. I was just talking to somebody about this the other day about something and she's, and it was kind of like, well, this is what I felt. I'm like, well, that wasn't really the intention. And I was, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm like thinking of my own narratives, which, you know, that I find myself, it's like, if I say something or I don't get things done, I'm feeling guilty. I'm feeling like I'm letting everybody around me down, which you said to me today, which was very nice. Maybe, I don't know, just kidding. Uh, about that I have to own everything. And it's like, I need to hear that because I think I don't, but I guess I do. I try to help everybody. So I'm trying to take on their, their hurts, their, their, their anxiety. And I'm trying to like buffer them, which is not really my responsibility. And so I thank you because like I said, I feel like I'm like letting everybody down if I don't say yes to everybody, or if I don't think I have to get all these things done. Then I, sometimes I think like, well, there's a minute I can, I can put, I can squeeze something in that minute. I like what you said about that hour. That was amazing. Yeah. Because like you said, you were, you're not for yourself so much as it's for your, even for, it's for your client. It's for the whole thing. I'm always thinking I have a minute. I'll squeeze two in there. Yeah. No, that, that is also overwhelms our mind, mm -hmm. our emotions. And that's when we get aggravated and when we get aggravated, at one point, we just explode. Mm. We do. Even I do, believe it or not. And, I don't know we uh, all do. I mean, it's emotion. It's an emotion we have. But like I said, I think there's like, you're what you're saying is there's a way to try to diffuse it before it gets there. <laughs> you have to do it before. it. But if you, if you, if you uh, meet a person who pushes all 13 buttons on you, you will explode. Uh, so... Again, do I need to explode? No. Do I want to explode? No. So two no's, but nature happens. We're all humans. Mm -hmm. I posted today something, I say, you are not perfect and you don't have to be because nobody is. Oh, I agree. No, I agree. I saw that. And, and I was uh, yeah. Am I perfect? Holy hell no. Oh, no. You know, 
that's that's one funny thing. I had a conversation with a client on Monday. Well, everything is just perfect. You could say, listen, let me tell you one thing. You're my client, but you are more perfect than I am. And he looked at me. How can you say it? I say, if I would be perfect, I would not be able to help people because I help from my imperfection learning every day. And every day I learn from every client like they learn from me. Okay. I learn about new things I never knew about. Mm -hmm. New hangnails people can have. I don't even know that could be hangnails. So I can apply it to the next client. So why I'm not perfect? I don't have to be. I don't have to be. Because it is not about me. It is about others. And here, I don't take ownership. Okay, I don't take ownership. I, I told you I have the funny habit. I work with my clients in between sessions too. And oh, when there was no cell phone and stuff, man, this answering machine was full. I did this already to that time. And I always try to call back and call back into one day I says, man, I spent 50% of my time just calling back. So I limited, I say, one question a week. Well, now with cell phone and email and texting, I could expand it again. Mm -hmm. But you have to pay attention to what really is needed and not on everything. There is some people there, they called me and says, you know, I had a fight with my sister today. I, I, I don't know if I should make up or not. Well, if you call me about that, you're an idiot. You have to decide if you want to make up or not. Mm -hmm. I can help you when I know the circumstances, how to make up. Mm -hmm. But you have to make the decision. To do it, yeah. Yeah, like whenever, when I told you this funny thing, when no one says, well, can you make me to want that really to change my life? No, I can't. I can help you that you see that you want it. But I cannot make to do anybody anything. If you're not in it to win it, don't go in a race. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're not even Copperfield, nor are you Genie. Like, it's not like snap a finger and no, I change no, you. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. And I, 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 people don't understand that when you love people, sometimes you have to be firm and strict with them. That is part of love. Part of love is sometimes saying, listen to hear and not further. Now lean back, breathe, and think about it. Because you want to enable people, not disable people. I you agree. want people to evolve and progress, not become their babysitter. I want intelligent people to keep their intelligence and make it even more working. I want good people to feel good that they're good people. Okay? And that can only happen if you're in it, if you see it. And uh, if you believe what is important and highly underrated is our energy, our energy, cosmic, personal chemistry, all this energies around us is highly underrated to influence us. They make us daily. And here's again, what energy do I need to apply? What energy can I put on the back burner? I might need it later on. Spiritual energy. Most likely I need on the end of the day when I had a hard day to meditate and count down. I will not need it every five hours, five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we need to learn about our different energies, how to apply them when we need to apply them to become a more balanced person. And a more balanced person is a happier person. Can we discuss that the next time? I think that'll be a really great topic. Yeah. I think yeah. that would be really great. <laughs> Which one? The, balance? the energies, balancing the energies and the different kind yes, of energies. Yes, we can do that next time. I really, you know, I'm listening to you and I, I want to, I want to spend like, I, when, when I spend time with you, Andre, I wanted to sit here for like hours and I know we don't have hours, um, but I just, I, I just, I, I don't know if you noticed, I feel like a sponge. I'm like, I'm taking it in and I'm like, I'm processing it. And I, I, I started to think about, because I think I'm a person who thinks 
I think I have my life together. But then when I start listening to you, I still think I'm, I'm pretty stable and settled, you know, in that sense. But there's a lot I could do to improve. And it's, and it's not, like you said, about perfection. It's just improvement to make my life simpler and more mindful and purposeful. Because when you've got too much clutter and you're thinking you're doing all these things, you're really only giving half. You know, you th I think I'm giving 100%, but I can't give 45, 50 people 100% because I don't have 500 or 5,000% yeah. in one day. Exactly. So I'm like, I was just thinking about Monday night, I had a meeting. When you're you're probably smack me when you hear this. So Monday night, I had a meeting. And so I am getting ready to have my daughter's getting ready to have a baby. And I got a lot of things going on. So in the meeting, I said, I'm going to be like in and out of the office a lot. So you won't see me as much. I said, but I have my felt cell phone with me. I will answer it all the time, 24 seven. Don't worry about it. And more than one person's like, oh yeah, I called her at like 1030 at night. And she answers the phone. And then I'm thinking to myself, now I'm listening to you going, why do I make myself that available all the time. <laughs> what you do, you bring your own value down. Yeah. Think about it. You're available around the clock. You bring your value down. Mm -hmm. You will be taken for granted. Exactly. Exactly. Do I answer at 1030 my phone? I look at the number and I know if I have to answer or not. The need, the need, the need to react, the need to own things, the need to respond, the need is only one to communicate, to communicate clearly and says okay if you call me after nine o'clock at night i might not answer mm -hmm. i might but i might not if you call me before seven in the morning i might not answer you need to set time When do you sleep? When do you recharge? When do you eat? If you're 24 seven available. Recharging. The need to react. Yes. You wanna help everybody, but you cannot. Oh, by the way, you wanna help me? I would. But you're okay, in I'm let's fly over here. I need my house cleaned. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. I like, yeah. Well, you, you overheard a conversation. Now, now I'm thinking, I, should, I feel so bad because it's like, I just felt like we should help this little old lady. Now I'm like, Ugh. so well, I'll, um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's all good. <laughs> well, next, time, next time we do uh, balance and energy, of course, because it's a very, very underrated uh, topic and, and, and people don't realize it. They always, people always, when you talk about energy, about spiritualism, they always think hocus pocus, which yeah. is not. They always think it's abracadabra. It's mm -hmm. not. It is real. And so are we. And because we are, we have to go with on with today. I wish all our viewers a great, great day. I wish you a blessed rest of the day and look forward to our next conversation. I can't wait. So um, thank you again, Andre. I, I, you're always so, I, I, I'm so enlightened and so lightened <laughs> when I speak with you. So, I mean, it really, like I said, at the end of all this, if when y'all see that there's this transformation, then you'll know this is the man to talk to and to listen to, because I mean, I cannot tell you how many things I've just learned about myself and our brief time together. And I just know it's just going to get more. So uh, thank you so much. And as always, have a great day and God bless. And I will talk to everybody soon. Uh, you're listening to One Non Blonde. Have an awesome day. Bye. Bye.